stealth winter camping. Oh, you're gonna get us a copyright strike. <laughs> they could still say it's a cover song. What'd you see? You're armed. All right, something's after our hot dogs. Focus. Uh, so I think the first thing we'll do is we're going to fit our vent screen there into the shielding. And it fits really snug and tight. But to seal the deal, <laughs> to seal the deal, we're just gonna, there we go, okay. Heat shrink doing what heat shrink does. Okay. So now we know that that is not going anywhere and that it is airtight enough. Again, um, I mean, in theory, fuel shouldn't come up through this. <laughs> if, if it does, then, then we have another problem. But this will filter anything from getting sucked into the check valve to prevent it from working. So next up, we're going to insert the check valve into this, again, um, Six millimeter outside diameter, three millimeter inside. I know, sorry, metric, Canadian A. You can uh, Google the conversions or whatever. Okay. Insert this into the shielding. This shielding, <laughs> use whatever fits, and it's it's heat shrink shielding, so it'll it'll go to the size that you want. Okay. But anyway, the, this shielding, uh, it's off a wiring harness from a Jeep TJ. The one that goes into your multifunction switch. Did some rewiring on the Jeep and uh, had all this leftover heat shielding. All right, so yeah, I think that's going to fit. And it fits nice and snug. There we go. You can see we have lots of room for this six millimeter outside diameter fuel line to snug down tight into there. Again, we're using a little, we'll use a little bit of JB Weld just to seal it up. Maybe I'm a genius and I will start selling you guys these on Amazon or something like that. I can mass produce them. I have the ability. Catasca chainsaw repair and taxidermy. We, we, we do a lot over here. It's better than OEM. Got a patent this before the Husqvarna engineers are all over this. Doing a little leak down test here with our Midivac 8500. We're going to make sure that this external vent valve mod is not leaking at all. I've already leak tested it with water. So go ahead and just pinch the end of this with our hemostat. I'm not worried about the end of that. I'm actually going to shorten it up anyway, cut it off. So <laughs> put this into our intake line first we'll okay we put our gas cap on there and now we'll start with doing the setting it to the pressure mode okay and we're gonna put in about seven or eight psi into the tank and just make sure that it holds PSI 
There. Now we're at seven. Hopefully you can see that. And it's holding steady. So we'll go ahead and release that pressure. And now we're going to set it to vacuum. Okay. Set that on over to vacuum. And this is just to test that the vent, you know, as the fuel is used, we need to let air into it through the vent. So it shouldn't hold any significant vacuum. I want to make sure it doesn't build up vacuum. Or if it does, set it isn't for long so there we go we can get to about 5 psi as soon as we let off it you can see it drops down now if if I hold my finger on that vent can see we're actually starting to build up some vacuum that's about seven or eight psi if I take my finger off the vent there we go so yeah I think this mods gonna work I guess the only question is with the vibration of the saw running is it gonna is it gonna cause any issue with the <laughs> JB weld job there I don't know we're gonna find out all right, now we're doing the same leak down test on the cylinder and crankcase there. Make sure there isn't any kind of leak in the block, letting air in or out. Um, on, on this side, between the exhaust shield and the cylinder, we have a piece of rubber that's, uh, I mean, it's kind of a primitive way of doing it. It could still leak a tiny bit of air, but, uh, but that's, we're not worried about that. Um, and also for the, we have, the carb adapter on here and i think this is uh there's a little port down here that is uh for the the impulse port this uh this is just a plug this is a plug with a hole in it so we'll start with the vacuum test this one's easier because it's not going to try and blow anything out right so set this make sure it's set the vacuum we'll do the uh we'll do the pressure test right after this Okay. All right. So, like I said, hopefully you can see it's holding steady there at around 8 psi. Cool. And we'll release the pressure there, release the vacuum. All right. So now we're going to do the uh, the pressure test. For this, I will need my assistant. There, you can do this with two or three hands, but uh, it's better with four. So make sure we're set to pressure there. We got that set to, uh, let's see. All right, we're, we're about seven and a half PSI there. Just wait a second, make sure it holds. Yeah, we're looking good, it's holding, it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna call that good. This Midivac 8500 gadget sure is cool. Thank you to my lovely assistant. Well, there we go, just did a little compression test as well. Well, there we go. No more bogging. 
everything checked out all good holds great compression so we did a little adjustment there turned up the high jet just a little bit and uh, yeah there it is idling away all happy there just figure I let it burn through a tank for some more break-in probably not necessary at this point having a campfire now eating some hot dogs I want to get my water. You want your water? I don't want to get in my shot. Yeah, don't get in my shot. I'm doing professional filming here. Oh! Oh, I just got hit on a bump. You know, you can't be cutting down anything live, so we just look for stuff that's not totally rotten on the ground. Sink the saw through it. This stuff was... I, th I thought this was rotten when we first looked at it, and I just... I, like, I have to sink this saw into something big, but... You know, if it's a bunch of slimy, soggy log, it's not a really good test, but like, yeah, this thing, <laughs> pretty freaking solid. So that was a good test. <laughs>